that don't impress me much. But you know what does? The Sir Francis Drake FC team, who has battled through everything and earned promotion. In this episode, we're going to do all the off-season stuff and get ready for our big move up, being promoted. You know what else also impresses me? The support you all give by hitting that like button. You might as well go around right now and take care of that duty as we speak. With all that said, we got a busy day. We're going to go ahead and look at everything that has transpired in our league and other leagues around the world. And then we've got to make some big decisions on personnel, what we're going to do. We're also going to upgrade that last scout and try to bring in a big winner before the season flips over so that that money will count against us. What was that they just showed on uh, Hornick, I believe? Oh, Harry Cornick is the golden boot winner. Oh, man, I'm so worried a big team is going to come after him, but we're just going to have to play it by ear. I've got two spreadsheets open right now of the team, their overalls, their values, their contracts and everything, and we'll go through that. But first, let's go ahead and just look at our league and see how it transpired. Sheffield running away with it with 102 points, one of the higher totals I've ever seen in this game playing. They win League One, earn automatic promotion with us at 88 points and winning on goal difference over Peterborough. But either Peterborough, Luton Town, Plymouth Argyle, or Oxford will be joining us moving up a division. I'm really excited about that. I am a little bit scared. In League One and Two, the computer didn't really score a lot, but I know in the top two tiers, they tend to score a lot more. So we're good at defense. We're going to have to be better. Uh, looking at who got relegated, AFC Wimbledon, Morecambe, Doncaster, and Barrow going down. I believe that Barrow was with us coming up, so that is interesting with that. And I can't remember who the other one was. Was it Port Vale? I'm getting them a little confused now. Cambridge survived getting out of the relegation zone. Let's go down and see League 2 and just go from there. All right, in League Two, Salford City, Fleetwood Town, and Mansfield down coming up, and either Bradford City, Cheltenham Town, Bristol, or MK Dons will be joining them. Uh, relegation on this one would have been Walsall, Hart Hartlepool, Crawley Town, and I think Sutton. I can't remember if it's the bottom four or bottom three in this one. So that is interesting. Let's see the change. We need to make note of who is dropping down to League One. Uh, so maybe we could pilfer some players. So looking at the championship, we will not have to compete against Leeds United or Watford. They're going up to the Premier League. 100 points. Wow, Leeds blowing it away. And then either Blackburn, AFC Bournemouth, Norwich, or Fulham will be joining them. I'm, what does the AFC mean on these English soccer teams? I'm curious about that. A few moments later. Thought it was something exciting. It's like Association Football Club. I mean, I know it's not American. That's what it would be here, but you know, so that's interesting. All right. So what's important to us is who is actually coming down. Bolton, Rotherham, and Blackpool. And they did awful. So those are teams that will be looking at their players and seeing if there's anybody worth poaching for next season. All right. Looking at the Premier League, Manchester City. Beating out Manchester United for that. Chelsea and Liverpool uh, rounding out the top four. The Spurs take fifth. Who is relegated? So Burnley, Preston, and Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough will be joining. Uh, oh, my God. 15 and 13 points. Abysmal seasons. Two wins. Definitely not good enough for the Premier League. Hmm. That scares me. All right, looking at League One, uh, PSG, obviously, one point over Monaco. Wow, that was a very close. Actually, the top three, all within two points of each other. Very close league on that one. Bayern Munich beating out Dortmund by five points. Leverkusen there in third. Leipzig and Wolfsburg. Rounding out the top five, Hoffenham. They're going to sneak into some competition action. 
Uh, looking at Italy, I'm pretty sure the Piemonte Calcio is Juventus, be now Milan and Inter Milan uh, for that. And again, very close. So not a lot of blowouts like there normally are. And I wonder if everything's kind of balancing out with the game and just the way that it works. Uh, looking at La Liga, Atletico de Madrid beating out Real Madrid and FC Barcelona. That one not as close, but I mean, it's not that bad. The Spanish, look at them. 28 wins, wins it. And then in America, it's still going on in Major League Soccer. Who knows what's going to happen in that one. So as we saw earlier, Harry Cornick definitely winning the Golden Boot, 28 goals and 35 matches. Beating out Petersboro's Clark Harris. Vader and Cooper, also, they all three had 20 goals. I don't know if anybody else of our team made the list here, and it doesn't look like it. So he did lead the way. Obviously, it is very imperative. We try to keep Cornick. Uh, I'm feeling that big teams are going to come after him. He was kind of a last-minute signing when Shehao went down, and now it worries me that he's earned his place up in the Premier League, perhaps. So we'll have to see. An assist. Morris, of all people, our right wing up there with 12 assists and 36 matches. That kind of shocks me. Varga. So our wing play, something that a few of you were really iffy on that first season, seems to be working out. Between the two of them, we had 19 assists. So that is not bad at all. I wonder if anybody else comes through. No, they are the top two. And that is very interesting, which I guess that means that our front three did work. Uh, Morris has been the surprise. A very, It does say he has that something special, and he did showcase it this season. Clean sheet, Schofield, 27 out of 46. I think that number will definitely come down. He is another player that I have a feeling that some big team. Uh, we can say no to a lot of deals, but obviously if a Premier League team comes and ask for one of these players, we kind of have to go with it because I think it would be cruel to not let a player move up if they've earned that right. Like a Cornick or a Schofield would be that. Other people we could probably debate with, um, but we have to kind of remember, you know, it, in reality, a player would probably be really pissed if we declined to do that. So we'll have to keep that in mind. Yellow cards, we did have a few of those. Null with two this year getting on the list. I don't know if we had anybody else. I thought that maybe Jago or somebody else would have been on there, but it doesn't look like it. Uh, red cards, I know that we had somebody join that list. Let's see if they even made it. Uh, Seawald, yes, getting in there. He didn't deserve it, but he got it. So taking a look at the team this year and just seeing where they're at, Schofield moves up four to a 71 overall at age 23. As I said, I've got a feeling somebody big is going to come after him. We've got Leonard in waiting. Leonard, plus two this year, very limited playing. We did put him out there a little bit and in some of the preseason, so he grew. We're going to lose Seawald. He did pick up three while on loan with us, so his home team is probably going to be very happy about that. Adeyemi, tremendous growth this season. At 17, he is already 61. He may be our starting left wing back, though we do have a number of youth players that we can move up. And I think this season I will move a lot of those people up and send them out on loans. I think that's what we need to do while we're in the championship because I believe, I really think we've done tremendous to move up, but I don't see us moving out of the championship league to the Premier League in one season. So I'm just, I'm throwing that out there now. I just don't think it's, a, it's possible. Lamb, I, I was really worried. I, he's another player, only up one this season. I think he's kind of plateaued, but I've got a feeling other teams have been poking at him, but same plateau level movement, so we kept him. Bentley, 29, didn't move up at all this season. I really like Ronnie, but I've got to make a big decision about him. Forsyth is also an aging center back. All of our center backs are 29 or except Komotio plus three. He's up to 63. He is probably one of our future stars in that center back role. I'm very excited about him. And he was a great deal picking him up. He did age one year, but that's not a big deal. Uh, looking at our right backs, Kalua has been tremendous up three this season, 63. We've got Watkins. 
We brought him up. It says he's showing great potential. We'll have to keep an eye on him and see if he can fill that role. We sold Biscop earlier, so Biscop will be joining Accrington uh, when the window opens. He did go up five. That's just one of those players we had to make money on. Wyatt, I believe Wyatt's contract is running out. And we'll probably try to move him if it's not. Let me see here. No, he's got a year left, so we will try to sell him. I think he's already contract. Or, yeah, he's transfer listed, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Uh, James Jago, up to 71. He is 31 years old, and Noel is 32. So our center backs and our CDMs are aging, and we got to keep an eye on that. Uh, Noel did a really great job this year. He did start wearing out a lot toward the end of the season. So we'll have to keep that in mind. Almeida is somebody we brought in. He is young. He grew plus five this season. He could fill a lot of those holes. A really good player who can transition to the role when we need him. Uh, moving up to the front of our offense, Pablo Bravo, plus seven to 65. He's another player that I think Cornick, Bravo, Schofield, and Lamb are players that I think could be poached from us to teams with big piggy banks. I would love to keep Pablo Bravo. The good thing about him, though, is we do have Shigari, who's not as good, but we saw that Shigari can get in there and fit that role if necessary. Uh, we have Collier. He is actually transfer listed, but his contract's expiring, so nobody's going to come at us. They're just going to let his contract run out, and he'll be gone. Uh, Varga. Varga has been a tremendous person. He lost three this year. He's retiring, and... With this game, they just fall off a cliff. And Varga is getting out right before the cliff he falls off. He's wily Coyote right now, but he's getting ready to plummet. But Varga has done a tremendous job for us. And thank you, good sir. He is in Sir Francis Drake history. Looking at our left wing, the only other one we have on the team until we pull up some of the youth is Ojukwu. He went up four. He's in the 60s already at age 19. I'm... I think he can fill that role, but like I said, we have two players that we have to call up that are going to be coming over. They're both 58 overall, and I'll just have to look at their value and maybe see which one of those we're going to keep. Morris, as it says right there, he has that special something, plus five up to 66. Morris did an amazing job this season. I'm so happy with the way he turned out. I know that a lot of people were kind of iffy on him, but he has turned out to be amazing. His backup, Koch, plus five. Koch can also play that left-wing role if necessary, and Ojukwu cannot do that. Um, so that's something we have to keep in mind when we start putting the team together. Looking at our strikers, Harry Cornick, plus one to 70. He is starting to age. I'm curious at who comes after him. Another player is Pap. Pap. Plus one to 64 at age 18. I like Pat. Um, I'm still debating what to do with Pat. If we can keep him as a backup, I will. But as you can see there, his contract, and he's only making $800 a week. We're obviously going to have to give some of these people, but he has plateaued at age 18 already, it says. So... As much as I like him, I don't know if his growth is there to be with the team. Though we do need somebody young because with Cornick at 28 and Shehow at 28, even though Shehow is plus 2 to 70, after being injured, that's something to keep in mind. Also remember that Shehow can play that left wing spot as well. So that may be a move that we put him over there with Ojukwu, and then we've got Cornick and Pap, and then whoever else we bring up from the youth squad. Coin. Coin at age 30, his contract is expiring. I'm not going to bring him back on the team. He led the team out of League Two and helped us, but his injury that he was out for an entire year just pretty much ruined him. Uh, he'll find a team, I believe. We're just going to have to pay attention to where he goes and just watch him and see what his last few years. I don't think he'll have much left in the tank, but we'll just have to see. Some of our players we did put out on loan, Luke Lord, who I really knocked myself, um, has went up plus seven. He's in the fifties now, which is good. You know, that got him out of the forties. I still don't know if he'll find a place here on the team. He is only 17. So we'll have to find out. And Egby 
went up plus four. So he is at 60 at age 18. So they'll be coming back and we'll have to figure out what we're going to do with them. I may loan them out again just to see what happens. I'm not sure what their contracts. Yeah, they're on extended contracts. Uh, so we'll just have to go from there. Contract wise, only coin Varga, who, you know, there's no suit since Collier, I believe are the only ones with contracts. Seawald, which is a loan, are the only ones with contracts in disarray. Other than that, I, like I said, we're, we're going to have to bring up a number of youth players. We'll go look at them right now. Looking at our youth, we've just got a ton of players who are developing. Heaney, uh, let me bring up my sheet here. All right, on the youth players, Heaney here, I know I'm, I don't know why I'm saying that's so weird. At age 16, he's 60. He is worth, he was one of our first big finds. And why can I not find him here? He was worth 800K, so he's going to be really, really good. We've also got Edwards here at 53. We'll let him percolate. I don't think unless they're at 60, we even think about it. Ibrahim, I'm still thinking about what to do with him. I may bring him up or I may leave him. He was worth 875. So we got a lot of high value players that are worth a lot. We have to bring Fernandez up right now. He is 63 overall. Fernandez was worth 850. Hernandez and Alonzo are going to be two great players. Might bring them up just to get them a repetition or reps in behind Jego and Noel. We need to see what's going to happen to them first. Jego and Noel, that is. But we've got two players in waiting ready to come up for them. And Alonzo is going to be amazing. Alonzo was worth $1.3 Our second most valuable player, I believe, we have. Uh, Neves uh, could do the left wing role, but at 17, he's not ready to come up yet. We'll let him develop. Noradal is a player we have to bring up. He's at CAM and CDM, but his defense isn't that good. You can see 29. I'm not going to play him at CDM. I may bring him up and just list him, and we'll sell him right away. It depends, again, what happens to Pablo Bravo and some of the other ones. We also got Messina, who is 16 and going to be really good as well. Let me find his amount here. For some reason, I don't see it. And I know he was, oh, he's worth 600K. So he's going to be decent. We got a Kuna who could play left wing as a player to watch. I don't think he's quite ready to come up at 55. Kantz Zoglu. We found him out of Greece. Overall 60, right wing. We'll watch him. He needs to work on his speed a little bit. We have to bring up Adams and DeSantos right now. They're both left wings and play that left side. Dos Santos can also do cam. Adams is 58 overall. He's grown, and Dos Santos is 55. I swear that Dos Santos was worth a little bit more than Adams. I know Dos Santos was 450. I don't remember exactly what Adams was worth. So we may bring them both up and just see which one works out the most. we got Garcia on right wing. I don't think we're going to need him for a bit until Morris uh, gets in some issues. I'm going to let Ribeiro uh, work. He's 17. Uh, we will probably have to bring him up at some point. He is our most valuable youth player at 2.3 million, but I know he's not going to sit there for long. We're going to have to bring him up. If we do lose a Cornick and Shehal becomes the best and Pat goes away, Ribeiro may be the stud that we bring up and bring in. Lots to think about on that. Lots. But I will bring some of these players up because we have to, the four we have to do, and then move from there. Uh, yeah, so much to do in this. Op this is going to be a long episode. All right, so I advanced it a day. We've already had another youth player, and I'm sure we're going to have a few that want to just move up. And uh, Consiglu is wanting to be brought up, and I think I'll just bring him up and list him for trade. He is a right midfielder out of Greece. He was worth a 550K. Uh, I just don't think he's ready to play on the main team, and we don't really use midfielders that much. And he doesn't have... 
defense that can really allow him to play. He could play right wing, but his pace is not even in the 70s. It's not even green. So I'm going to bring him up and immediately list him for transfer. All right, looking at the League One playoffs, Peterborough defeats Oxford United 4-1 in the aggregate, and Plymouth Argyle defeats Luton Town. They'll square off in Wimbledon Stadium to see who joins us moving forward with Sheffield. That is interesting. I know a lot of people, I don't, I don't know what it is. Uh, Peterborough seems to be disliked across a lot of people that I watch stream this game and play this game. I'm not sure why. So it is interesting, you know, history nerdism here. Plymouth Argyle, like I think of Plymouth Rock, and then they've got a pawn this rock on their shield and crest. So that's interesting. We'll see who wins that. All right, we've got scouting reports coming in, the last probably of this season before we flip over. Enrico Conti looks really good. We'll have to check that out. And he looks like he may be the only one looking here. Just their values. And I know it's kind of a cheap way to do it, but it also is a speedier way. So that guy's like 300,000. 325. Just not going to cut it right now, especially moving up again. Let's see what Enrico Conti. Only two. So he is definitely on the lower end. I'm going to leave him and let him uh, be scouted further. We'll check out the other guy. Uh, 84, not, 76 to 94 could be a good one. Uh, Van de Meer there. We'll see. Oh, my God. This guy's worth 1.4. Van Veen. Oh, wow. Okay. Um then what's Vandermeer worth? 620. Oh my God. The Netherlands, 300 K and he's the low ball Vermeulen. Uh, we'll let him go. And I think we'll sign Vandermeer and Van Veen. Just another update before we check them. I did hire a new scout, Gabriel Oliver. We've sent him to Canada at your all's request. Three star experience, three star judgment. So right now we've still got we've got three scout we've got three stars on all the scouts. The judgment is three or four. Connor Fagan probably could be replaced at some point, but for right now I think he's okay. We'll see what our budget is for scouting, and then we'll go from there. So Vandermeer, who is worth six hundred twenty-five, he's only fifteen, so we want to keep him balanced. He's got a great agility, so he's going to be a great ball handler. It looks like he can do that left wing. So we'll let him grow here and we'll see what happens with him. He is left footed. So a left wing could be great for him growing. Van Veen is 64 at 17 and he is a cam. Wow. Great agility. His acceleration is coming up there. Needs to develop that. Definitely going to. He he may want to come up quickly. I would like for his shooting to get up. His dribbling and passing and pace are amazing. So let's go with Shadow Striker on him. He could be the next Pablo Bravo. That is, we've got a lot of options right now. And there you have it. So Sheffield, Sir Francis Drake, and Peterborough will be moving on to the Championship League. Interesting. Very interesting. We've also already had an offer in for one of our players, the right midfielder, uh, Consoglu, and the offer is already coming in higher than what we originally wanted. Uh, they He's valued. Our value said that he was worth 500 and something thousand. They're already offering 660. And it's Gillingham, so he would be playing back below us where we just left. I may ask for 700000 and go from there. I think, like I said, if we can make some money off of him, we're not going to utilize him. Let's go from there. I actually asked for seven hundred fifty, and they took that. So you know what? More power to him. Let's go. All right, I think we've got our first scouting report in from Canada already. 
And we'll see what ooh, potential of 91 Zach Anderson. Joey Cunningham. Ooh, Mike Graham looks decent. Devin Palmer. Logan Fisher. We'll see if we found a hidden gem here. 275, not going to make the team. 140. Mike Graham, what do we got? 160. Joey, 140. Zach Anderson was the one we thought may stand out. 275. I'm going to leave him on here just to see what we've got. Let's see if Gabriel can bring us a little bit more coming back from Canada. All right, it's time to end the season. We're going to switch over. We'll see what offers are going to go on the table. I think what I've decided to do... is I'm going to put Pap on transfer. I'm going to put Lord and Egby, who come back from loan, on transfer. And I may put Kalua on transfer, which I know that's going to shock a number of you, but with Fernandez coming up and Fernandez being 63 overall at a much younger age, I think... That may be kind of the way to go on that. The board is delighted with my performance as manager. I'm glad because if they weren't, I would be a little concerned. Uh, Preseason tournament will obviously take the one that's got the most like exotic teams. Uh, this one looks good. It's got a big mixture of France and Germany in it. I think I see a Polish team. Yeah, that's all English teams, and that's got a number of English. Yeah, we don't want Plymouth Argyle. We'll do the European International. All right, New Jersey's this year. I think that what I'm going to go for, obviously we're going to keep the green for our home kits, but I really need something that stands out a little bit more on our away kits. We didn't get to utilize this light blue too much. It blended with a lot of the whites and uh, off colors, so I'm thinking of maybe like a purple or something hideous. So I'll work on that and I'll come back. Minor upgrades to privateers hold. Um, we're championship league. I may add some more seating. So we'll go for there. All right, here's our new home kits. A little bit crazy this year. We're incorporating that purple back into our uniforms. We're keeping the green and then the sea blue that uh, we've been bringing with us. To For some reason I had to put our green color is the tertiary, the third layer color for it to be more. Uh, a lot of you were complaining that having one color with the same color socks made it look like they were wearing pants. So I think with this look, uh, we'll be able to really see the difference. I am still debating between the number being purple or black. I don't think it makes a big difference because, uh, you know, when they're zoomed out, we won't be able to really tell. But I do like this contrast of green, blue, green with just the purple. I am thinking of utilizing the purple as our away colors, or I may go with that blue, the darker blue to use, but we do need something that clashes with the other home jerseys. All right, for home, for away kits, we're gonna go with that purple color and the blue. I have thought about putting this green as both colors, and that looks really wild on there, but it seems like the blue does add like another layer to it. And I do enjoy the white lettering that they have. I do like it how it goes around the backside. That is really nice. I, I like that. I think it's different. I think it shows so good contrast between our home jerseys being the light color and then the dark away jerseys. Crest is staying the same. Private here's hold. The only thing I changed is the backdrop. You can see there a little bit. We're going to have bigger buildings and we're holding like 400 more people. So no, not a really big change to that. So it looks like our transfer budget for this season has definitely increased in its stature. 9.12 million. Uh, we are above target. What is our things this year? Youth development, sign at least three players younger than 20 years old. That shouldn't be hard to do. With potential greater than the average overall rating, yeah, that shouldn't be hard. Brand exposure, get seven games with at least one gold score in away matches. That could be tough. Financial, they want me to make $17.7 .7 million profit from youth player sales. That may be impossible. They wanted me to avoid relegation. Okay, that makes sense. Reach the round of 16. I think we can accomplish that. Within two seasons, finish mid-table. So they're setting the bar very low for us, and that's fine. We just got to survive this year. And no continental success. 
All right, so looking at the calendar here, we got just the three friendly games. I think I'm going to simulate those this year just so we can get a little bit of the transfer window uh, leading up to the first league game. Let's actually look at the league table and see who all we have in this this year because this is going to be kind of interesting with us stepping up. So from top to bottom alphabetically, we can see here Barnsley and Birmingham City, Blackburn Rovers, Bristol City, Cardiff City, Coventry City, so many cities. Francis Drake, there we are, Derby County, Fulham, Huddersfield, Ipswich, Middlesbrough, Millwall, Norwich, Nottingham Forest, Peterborough, Preston, QPR, Queens Park Rangers, I believe, Reading, or is it Reading? Uh, Sheffield United, Sheffield, what's the WED stand for? I'll have to look that up. Uh, it, there's no way it's Wednesday, right? Stoke City, Swansea, West Brom. A few moments later. It is Sheffield Wednesday, football club. Well, I feel stupid now. What a neat offer here. Cincinnati, that's just north of me, has an interested signing Pap. Let's see if we can get a cool million dollars for him, and then I'll be okay with that. Uh, let's just see what we can negotiate. They'll take a million dollars. That's, that's a pretty good deal. I'm really worried, though, that we've undershot the value of some of these players, but it is what it is. All right, we got a friendly against Dunkirk today. I think I'm just going to, like I said, simulate these just to get by them and see what's going to happen. Here's the lineup I'm going to send in this first match. Shehal, Kornick, and Morris up front. Bravo, obviously, in there. Adeyemi, we'll try him out there at left wing back, see how he does. Noel and Jego. Kalua over there. Bentley, Lamb, and then Schofield, and we'll see what happens. Dunkirk running a 5-3-2. Kwagba, Kikandi, Vinoy, Yahoo, Tom, and Vachal in goal. Brahimi, Majuga, Pierre, Brunil, and Segbi Azankpo uh, up front. We come out with a 2-0 win. Ojukwu scoring. And then Morris, actually, I read that backwards, Morris scoring early, and then Ojukwu will come in there. Very, wow, I'm impressed by that. Let's go, a simulation win, we'll take it. All right, so here in the preseason, I'm going to go ahead and call up Heaney here. Uh, we need a left back to back up at a Yemi. Maybe. I think I'll wait till after the... Well, no. Do I want to bring him up now? I'm very curious. There's nobody else that can really fill that role. But I feel like Henny would get much more... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm committing right now. Henny is worth a lot for the team. Uh, he was worth, at what, 800000 I believe. So, Eddie Emmy was worth five ninety. Um... So I think we bring him up now that he's old enough and we get him in behind Adeyemi to learn and he'll probably eventually take over that role left wing back as the year goes on. All right, you scouts report in. Let's see what we've got. Here's Enrico Conte. He has dropped down a little bit. 74, ooh, 71, 94. Ooh, we got a couple of 94s, maybe good. Enrico not improved a bit. So keeping him and just scouting him a little bit more really doesn't help. Let's check out Diego Palmero, 140. Nope. Rizzi or Esposito here could be good. Let's start with here. 675, not bad. And 525. I may bring them up just to see what they look like, and we'll go from there. All right, both Rizzi and Esposito are forwards, which is good. Skill moves five, dribbling 72, not bad. Acceleration is moving up. Esposito is older. Great ball control, dribbling 71. His shooting is 53, though. And what do we have? Rizzi, who is 16, is... Wow, that's actually surprising. Esposito seems like he's more polished. And he's even got a better work rate. The agility, yeah, Esposito looks much better. Uh, we may keep both of them and sell one. 
I'm kind of shocked. Now, granted, Rizzy does have a couple of things. But Esposito at a year older is much more complete. We may keep those. Ribeiro is obviously our future, but those guys could be some money in the future. So we'll hold on to them. All right, let's check out the Netherlands. It's been very good for us here. Luke Koch. 75.94, 72.94, so a couple of good ones. We'll clear out these bad ones. I don't think Luke, 250, nope. Michael, 275, so either Decker or Hendricks here could be really good. 375, what is Decker? 325. I'm going to leave them on there. Oh, the scouting network for this country is any leading scout reject. Okay, so we can't leave them there. That's unfortunate. I'm going to reject them. I just don't think they're going to be that. And that means our youth scout, we need to relocate them. So going back to our list. Circling around. We can't go to Russia anymore. So that's uh, interesting. We've done the Netherlands. We just did... Let's let's play a little different here. We've not went to Germany. So we'll send one to Germany and then William here. I think I'm going to go back here to I was really thinking about going to America again. We've not went to Mexico. Let's hit Mexico and see what we can come up with. So we're hitting Germany, Mexico and Canada. All right, second matchup today, we're going against uh, Searing. Selene up front, Masoni, Bobtib, Pierrot, Sanago, Pody, Godwin, uh, Malif, uh, Denuit, Faye, and Bernier, and Faced in Goal. Look at our jerseys, they look baller. Total backups in this one, the familiar faces that you all know, Shigari and Cam, Almeida, and Wyatt, who made a lot of appearances at right back in there, playing kind of out of position. Komotio, Forsyth, our backup goalkeeper, Leonard. We did have an offer for him, but I turned it down right now. And our new guys we brought in, we got Adams from America, Koch, who played last year, Egby, who is on the transfer window. We're putting him in there to give him some time. And then Heaney and Fernandez are our two youth people that we brought up. We'll see how they do. I'm not expecting a lot in this game, but uh, it is raining, but we got to let them get some time in. All right, we were soundly defeated there as they put four in the back of the goal. Pody scored early, then we kind of held them, and then the second half, uh, we put Lamb in there, Norodal, who were trying to get in there, and Watkins, and we just couldn't stop them. So they controlled possession. It was kind of even. We just didn't put anything in the back of the net. Ooh, rough, rough. All right, last, uh, what could be the last preseason game? Victoria Colon, Hondo Palacios Martinez up front, Eamon, uh, Santamir Lorch Fuentes in midfield, May Gregor Brazil, Gester and Malitz in. A little mixed lineup today. Most of our starters, the bench is players that we're trying to get in there. We'll see if we can get through. If we do, we do. If we don't, we don't. And we will drop that one. Looks like a close contest. Nothing in the first half. They score in the 46th minute early. Lamb, of all people, had to be a header or something. Comes back and ties the game up. Santamir puts him ahead. And then Jastromiski uh, puts him up. And then Morris does score late. So Morris showing some prowess as an attacking. And we just couldn't get back. So interesting. But that's probably going to be the end of us. I don't think we'll get through with that type of production in the preseason. All right, we've had an offer come in from Cornick, but it's from Millwall. They're offering about $3 million for him, but it is, they're in the same division as us, so trading him across would not be beneficial, especially for us, as we're going to try to survive in this league. So I'm going to turn it down. Uh, Celtic also tried to pick up Thomas Lamb, but again, that would be him now moving down a league. He is older. I thought if we rejected that, we may get some money. We would have to have a pretty substantial offer. He is getting older, but at 70, I would be more inclined to sell Forsyth or one of them 
or Bentley even more so than him. But uh, I'm going to reject this offer and we'll see what happens. But yeah, no Premier League teams have come in yet. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. All right, we've had an offer come in for Egby. He was one of the players we were looking to move. Um, I couldn't even tell you who this team is, but we'll try. What was he worth originally? 590000 and we could get over a million for him. That's almost a clean cut deal right there. Uh, with Pat gone, though, we will have to bring. Oh, we've got the guy on the bench that's or on the youth squad that's worth tons of money we can always bring up. So let's uh, definitely go in here and negotiate this and see what we can get. We'll try 1.3, see what they say. They're stuck at one. You know what? It's double. We'll take it. All right. After these sales, our transfer budget is up to $12 million, give or take having to change the wage budget. Now, with that said, I am going to have to go in and re-sign contracts for a lot of these youth players to solidify them for a while, especially when we figure out who is worth keeping and who's better. We also probably need to cut, call up a few more players. Uh, she how over here at the side though is working thus far. Uh, I don't know if I want to keep it that way. We'll just have to see what happens. I kind of like having him to come in for Cornick if we need another striker. All right, we have our scouting report from Canada here. Let's see how Zach Anderson holds up, and nothing really looking amazing out of this group. Zach still two seventy five, two twenty on Gagnon, Hunter Johnson two hundred. Wolf, nasty, and we'll get rid of uh, Zach. He's just not going to cut it. I think he may be done in Canada. No, he's got one more month. All right, so that's going to bring us to the first season game. So we've got a few things to play around with. Right here is what the starting lineup is looking like. Things I'm concerned about is our aging midfield defense with Nolan Jago. Right now, Kalua has the starting spot, but I am debating putting Fernandez in there. Comparing them, Kalua is a little bit faster. Fernandez is actually down two. Not sure why it says that when his stats have went up. Obviously, Fernandez, we've already had we had a wild offer from some team for two million dollars for him, but I would like to bring him up as soon as possible. He is a right wing back, so that's probably the loss. Oh, that's what, that's what it is, because if he would come in, he would lose two in that position. But I think he will develop. We could train him to be just a right back, because that's how we're playing that position. He is a better player, but uh, we'll see. I'm hoping we get another offer for Kalua. I will let you all decide what we do with Kalua on that and who starts. Uh, other changes is... Yeah, Adeyemi, we've got an issue. We brought up Henny with him. And looking at them, Adeyemi is not a natural left wing back, but we know he can play the position. He's a little bit faster than Henny. And uh, Henny can shoot better. He's better at passing, better at dribbling. Defending, though, Adeyemi is a little bit better, and he's more physical. So that is something to keep in mind with those two. Adeyemi looks like he's very much more aggressive. He got a little bit of kick. It's very interesting on that. So that's something to think about on those two positions. Like I said, we don't really have much depth at CDM. We've got Almeida who can come in. And that's about it. So we may need to call somebody else for that. I'm not sure why Leonard is on the bench. I would probably put like a Fernandez there to come in. And then Lord is here, but again, that's one of those things. If we put Dos Santos or Ojuku out here to start, we can bring Shihao off the bench. So I need you all to decide that as well. Do we start Ojuku in at left wing or do we leave Shihao in there to play that position? And then that leaves us some options. We don't have Pap to rely on anymore. We sold him, and we've got to play for survival this season, and we'll have to see what happens. So I'm interested to see what you all think. Again, we've got a lot of choices, especially when it comes to the youth academy. Like I said, I think one of the earlier people we'll bring up is this Ribeiro. He's going to be good. He can always come in and be that relief striker. 
I don't think we'll miss Pap with him. And then we've got a few other people that are obviously worth some money that we can bring in. Uh, CDMs, Hernandez, and Alonzo can come in. I don't think we need to br rush them in. When they're ready, they'll be ready, and they'll be able to play that defensive position very nicely. So that's something. I also think we got a few players that we can just sell for money, and we'll have to keep that in mind. Or we may need them. It may be an injury-ridden season. But let's look at what we're going to have going into the season opening. You all will know these teams way more than I will. It looks like we open with Sheffield United away. And then we have Stoke City at home. And then we have our first cup game. And who is this against here? Uh, it looks like uh, Tranmere, the Tranmere Rovers. We will take them on in ram, round one of the Carabao Cup. You can see some of the other matches there. You can pause it and check that out. So very interesting uh, thing coming up. And then you can see some more league games on down the way. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to be in the championship and I'm excited to see what this team can do. I feel like the ceiling is way up there, but we'll have to see. So leave me comments, leave me advice. Let me know what I need to be thinking going into this. And as always, thank you all so very much for your support. Hit that like button. If you haven't leave comments, leave, leave lots of comments, long comments. I love to read them. But as always, thanks for watching. God bless. And don't forget to make good decisions. Special thanks to these April Patreon supporters. If they were the safety dance, I'd do them at an 80s flashback party. Critias, Zachary McKinley, Nicholas Abisher, Azure Rain, James Matisse, The Least Expected, Kiana Handy, and Party Commissar.